But there was another letter that came from a little girl. Many, many of the historians said that this didn't exist. That's been a, a mystery for going on 30, 35 years now. The big question is, who's this girl? Who is she? Where is she? In September of 1958, uh, Dr. King was appearing at a department store in Harlem when he was stabbed in the chest uh, by a mentally deranged woman. Uh, he's rushed to uh, Harlem Hospital's emergency room and uh, the doctor uh, tells journalists that the blade of the knife uh, came so close to the aorta of, of Dr. King's heart uh, that had he even sneezed, uh, he almost certainly would have died. Fast forward uh, almost 10 years to 1968, uh, in what was perchance the last public speech he ever gave, King references back to one of these letters that he received. But there was another letter that came from a little girl. They had sent the dear Dr. King I am a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School. She said, while it should not matter, I would like to mention that I'm a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering, and I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing you to say that I'm so happy that you didn't sneeze. And he uses this line uh, again and again uh, in that extemporaneous speech. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962. The Negroes in all better Georgia decided to straighten their backs up. The fact that it wasn't in any of the available King archives made people curious as to how did King have this memory? Uh, was there such a letter? Uh, what had become of it? My mission was to find the, this girl. I started talking to experts in the field of King research. Some people suspected that this letter never existed. I looked in all the newspaper, you know, local newspapers in Westchester, et cetera, nothing. We checked with the high school. We just kept coming up with nothing. I started looking in the archives, a very prominent one in Boston. I checked with them, nothing. I checked with Stanford University. They didn't have anything on it. I checked with the King Center here in Atlanta, and they didn't have anything on it. And then I came to Morehouse. and I found in the, in the Morehouse collection of King Archives, there's an entire section dedicated to all the material that he received after he was stabbed in 1958. There's a whole lot of material that you see of his rough drafts, his writings and personal letters, correspondence uh, with other people. So it's a lot of material that is very special to Morehouse College. There were approximately 1,800 pieces. Figured I'd go through all of them and see if I could find it. For about a week, I went through all this stuff and I got to the letter K, and it was mid-afternoon uh, on a very quiet, boring day, going through all this stuff methodically, and I read Gene Kepler's letter, which ended with this famous line about the sneeze, and I literally jumped up from my chair and, and said, I got it. What we found was a letter from a 37-year-old young mother and has that famous line in it. But we didn't find a high school girl and he quotes a letter that um, it doesn't exist. I mean, it was really exciting to call Gene Kepler's children and tell them that their mother, uh, who they loved dearly, uh, what is a part of, of a history that they never knew about. Letter writing was a very big part of her activism. She wrote letters all the time, both to people that she thought were doing a great job and people that she thought were doing something terrible. And she did a lot of uh, volunteer work as well for uh, civil rights groups in particular. That was her passion.
I think she'd be delighted to be a part of the history. She'd be delighted if she could know that she was part of the history. Maybe she did, but I, I was never aware of that. I'm proud of her and I think she would have felt very good about it.